7.4 Matrices and System of Equations. What we should learn, write matrices and identify the dimensions, perform elimination row operations on matrices, use matrices and Gauss elimination to solve linear equations, and use, use matrices and Gauss Jordan elimination to solve linear equations. So first let's talk about a matrix. A matrix is a collection of data that's arranged in rows. So like this is a matrix. And we use it to streamline techniques of solving system linear equations. So we're going to be able to use like a calculator or a computer to solve linear equations using a matrix. So this is what a matrix is. Um, we know, call a matrix by n by n. So we go row by column, row by column. So that's like the, the size of the, ma the matrix. So here, right, we have rows, one, two, three, four. Rows will go this way. These are our rows and our columns go up and down. And the number of rows you have, the number of columns you have, you'll call it an n by n matrix. And each value here is an entry in the matrix. The dimension of matrix is row by column. So that's the, how big the matrix is, the row by column. So let's look at the dimensions of these matrices. This first one, there's one row and one column. This is a one by one. Over here we have one row, row one, but we have three columns, four columns actually. So this will be a one by four. Here we have a two by two. There's two rows and two columns, All right? So two by two. Here we have three rows, one, two, and three, and then we have two columns. So like row one, row two, row three, so you can see it, column one, column two. So this is a three by two, and this will be a three by one. So that's the dimension of a matrix. It's basically how big is it? So rows, then columns is the key. So the dimension is rows by columns. We can use matrices to solve system of linear equations. First, we need to rewrite the system as an augmented matrix. So let's say we have a system of linear equations like this. Then we could rewrite it as an augmented matrix. The general rule here is your x is going to be your first column. So each system is going to be a row. Your x should go in the first column. Your y should go in the second column. Your c is in the third column. Then we're going to put a line here to differentiate what our solutions are, like what they're equal to. It's like right there. So row by columns. And again, the elements in here are called elements. So this is a three by four matrix. And how are we going to solve it once we have it in the matrix? Well, there's some, there's some row transformations we can do. We can exchange any two rows. So we could like switch any two rows we want. We can multiply any row by any non-zero known row number. So you can multiply row by a number and you can multiply any row by non-row number and then add it to another row and change that to a new row. So like I could like add these two rows up and make my new row too. That's the idea there. So we're gonna do some of those elementary row operations. What do we want to get? Well, we want to get what's called row echelon form. So that's the thing here where we have three zeros. What that does is it makes it really easy to solve for x, y, and z. Because in this case, like remember, this is x, y, and z. And this one, I know my z equals four. And once you have that, you can just back substitute. And you go, okay, like we did with, th with a three by three. Z equals four, plug it into this equation solve for x, and then get those, plug it into the top equation, and get your y. So that's called row echelon form. And eventually, when I go, go to what's called reduced row echelon form, which is, you see the zeros here, we also mirror it with the zeros on this corner. What's so great about this is that we don't do any work. Once you have, well, you did all the work already, but once you get to here, z equals negative 2, y equals 4, and x equals 1. So reduced row echelon form makes it really easy once you get to there. Now, getting to there by hand is, is, a, little, is a little work. And you can also see how it's done on a two by two. So I go two by two here, like, oh, my y equals, my negative y equals two. And you can use that to solve for x. Over here, you just go, y equals four, x equals three. So let's do an, let's do an example. So we're going to solve this by using augmented matrices. So first, let's put it in an augmented matrix. So it'll kind of like this. So top row one can go two, negative four, line for the equal sign, and eight. And the bottom rows will go 1, 1, and negative 2. Now watch how it's very easy to forget, like, the negative. Actually, I, read, I did this once, and I forgot the negative 2, and I had to go back and restart my video. Well, read this portion of it. Anyway, so we have that. And now we want to get this guy to be a 0 here. So lots of ways you can do this. Like, even if you notice, this top row is all even. So if you want, you can do something like, let's multiply the row 1 by 1 half and make it a new row 1. So that's one of the elementary row operations we could do. Right, we could always just multiply any row by any number, and that's non-zero. Right, so it makes it a little easier. And now I want to make this guy a zero, so let's do 
row 1 plus negative 1 row 2. Let's try this. Row 1 plus negative 1 times row 2. We'll put that in row 2. That's right. You can multiply row by number, add it to another row, and put that in for, for any row you want. So let's do that. So first, let's multiply row 2 by negative 1. So that becomes negative 1, negative 1, and 2. Then let's add these two rows up. So I'm going to get... So keep in mind, row 1 to say exactly the same. Let me write it down so I don't forget. Row 2 is going to change. So we're going to add these two up. We get 0, negative 3, and 6. And then there we go. We have row echelon form. So using this, we can back those two. So this lets me know that negative 3y equals 6. And then here we have x minus 2y equals 4. So you can solve this real quick. Neg divide by negative 3 y equals negative 2. Then we go back and substitute that in there. So x minus 2 times negative 2 equals 4. x plus 4 equals 4 minus 4 minus 4. x equals 0. So we have 0 and negative 2. So that's how we use row echelon form to and matrices to solve the system of equations. Let's try another one now that we get the hang of it. So this is going to be 5, 2, 1, 2, negative 1, and 4. All right, and our, our primary goal is to get this to be a 0 right there. So in this case, I really can't multiply it like, I can't just multiply this by a number to make them cancel out there. And you're like, oh, I can cancel out the y's. But we're trying to do row echelon form. We're trying to make this guy a 0. So it looks like I have to do row 1 times 2 plus negative 5 row 2. Then we'll put that to ugly negative 5. Put that in row 2. All right, so we're going to do something like this. We want to make this a 0, so I need to find the common denominator. Let's multiply row 1 by 2. So I'll do this up here. So 10, five, uh, 4, and 2. And then we're going to, row to, we're going to multiply row 2 by negative 5. So negative 10, positive 5, and negative 20. Again, very easy to make a small mistake. Keep in mind, I'm keeping row 1 exactly the same. I'm only going to change row 2. So I'm going to I'm going to copy down row 1. And then row 2, we're going to add these up. So I'm going to get 0, 9, and then this is negative 18. Now, if I want a proper row echelon form, you generally want this to be a 1, and you want that to be a 1. Now, in this case, we just multiply each row by 1 over 5, and you get, your, you get proper row echelon form. But once you get down here, I generally just solve it. I'm like, OK, I know this is 9y equals negative 18. Divide by 9, divide by 9, y equals negative 2. And then you plug that back into the top row. You get 5x plus 2 times negative 2 equals 1. So 5x minus 4 equals 1, plus 4, plus 4. 5x equals 5. Divide by 5, x equals 1. So we have the point 1 and 2, negative 2 as our answer. Like that. So again, that's how we could use row echelon forms to help solve a system of equations. Now, like I said before, if you wanted to see something that's a little more proper, you could do 1 5th times row 1, make that row 1. And I could do 1 9th row 2 and make that a new row 2. If we had done that, I would have got 1 2 fifths, 1 5th, uh, 0, 1, and negative 2. Right. This is more proper row echelon form. And then here you know, oh, y equals negative 2. Done. And you have to go back and plug it in here to find out what your x is. So it works either way. How about let's do it with the 3 by 3. So first, we can pretty much do the same way. Let's put, a, let's put it in an augmented matrix form. So 1, 3, 5, line 2, 0. There's no x, so we're going to put a 0 there. 1, 2, 3, 1, negative 1, negative 2, and 4. So like that. Now again, if we're trying to go row echelon form, I need these guys to be a 0. Look, we already have 1, 0. So I need the so next thing we do is try to make this guy a 0. So what we're going to do is work with the top, with our, the, our things that have numbers left. Don't mess with the 0 here. Work with this one and this one to try to make this guy a 0. So I'm going to do row 1 plus negative 1 row 2 make the row 3 sorry and make that my new row 3 all right so i'm gonna try to make this guy a zero here so I'm multiply row 3 by negative 1 so negative 1 
1, 2, and negative 4. Now again, when I do this, we're going to keep row 1 and 2 exactly the way it is. 1, 3, 5, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3. And now we're going to add row 1 plus negative 1, which has row 3. So I'm going to add 1 with the blue here. I get 0, 4, 7, and negative 2. Again, very easy to make a small mistake, right? 5 plus 2 is 7. 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. So we have this, we have this system. Now again, if I'm trying to get row echelon form, I want this guy to be zero next. So now I'm not gonna deal with row one anymore because if I if I do with row one, it's an, I'm gonna add the one to some of these and I don't want that. I'm gonna deal with these two, right? Do with the two ones that have a zero here. So let's multiply row two by negative four and then add it to row three. So I'm gonna do negative four, did I say negative two, I'm gonna negative four, times row two plus row three, and that's gonna be my new row three. So let's, Let's write out what we have still, right? So I'm not going to change row one and row two. So that's going to say the same. One, three, five, two, line, zero, one, two, three, right? Those are not changed. I'm only going to change row three. So let's do this operation now. So negative four times row two. So let's multiply row two by negative four. So it's become zero, negative four, negative eight, negative 12. Now let's complete this operation here. So I'm going to add negative four, the negative four row two, which is in red, plus my row three. So I get zero, zero, negative one, and negative 14. Now it's essentially row echelon form, but this should be positive. So let's actually just do that real quick. I mean, you don't have to, but just for the sake of it, let's do that. I'm going to multiply row three by negative one. So I'm just going to get one, three, five, two, zero, one, two, three. And then zero zero one fourteen. So something like that. Right? And now we can solve things. Right? This tells me that z equals fourteen. Nice and easy. Then we can back substitute into row two. And that gives me y plus two times fourteen equals three. So y plus twenty-eight equals three. So y equals negative twenty-five. And then we can plug both of those in to row one to solve those. So we're going to get x plus three times negative 25 plus five times 14 equals two. Now, three times negative 25 is negative 75. Five times 14 is 70. So we get x minus five equals two. So plus five plus five, x equals seven, which makes our solution seven, negative 25, and then 14 XYZ. So that's how we use linear, that's how we can solve a linear equation using matrices and elementary row operations. Since they are linear equations, we have two special cases. We can either have no solution or infinitely many solutions. Right here, right, you can see from the bottom row that you essentially have zero equals zero, which is a true statement, so infinitely many. And on this one, at the bottom here, you get zero Z equals nine, which is basically zero equals nine. That's false, so no solution. So just like we solve the linear equations normally, right? You could have, if you get a true statement, infinitely many. If you get a false statement, no solution. Okay, now the real power of linear of system matrices is that you could use your calculator or your computer to use gauss jordan elimination. That's a way of getting the reduced row echelon form. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next, how to use reduced row echelon form to solve, any, to solve a system of linear equations super easily. So bring out a calculator, and we're gonna solve the equation we just did, but with the calculator. So let me bring out mine. So let me clear this real quick. First, I gotta go to matrices. So it's right here in matrix in blue. So I'm gonna hit second matrix. This is where you enter in your matrix. So sorry, this is where you select your matrices right here. Now there's nothing, I didn't plug any in, any in so there's nothing here. Math, we do some operations like reduce row echelon form. And then edit where you type in our, our matrix. So we can go there first. So we wanna type in this big matrix here. So first you gotta tell it what type of matrix, like what's the dimensions of it. So we have three rows and four columns, because it's not augmented. So we'll put say three by four, and it'll build a three by four, and then we just gotta type it in. So it's gonna be one, three, five, two, zero, one, two, three, and then one, negative one, negative two, and four. 
So it's all typed in. I'm going to hit quit to get out of it. Now if I go back to matrix, you'll see that the matrix we typed in is right there. It's a 3 by 4 Now let's go. That's two type of row, reach row echelon forms we could do. Sorry, two type of row echelon forms we could do. Right, there's row echelon form, which gives us almost to the answer, right? We have to do a little work afterwards, and there's reduced row echelon form, which gives us like the answer perfectly. So let's show how you do both of them on the calculator. But, you know, in reality, we're only ever going to do reduced row echelon form. But just, you know, knowledge. So under math, well, let's get out of here, just recap, right? So I'm going to go to matrix. I already have my matrix typed in. I'm going to go to math toward the very bottom. So you can keep on going until you hit the bottom. We have REF, which is reduced which is row echelon form, and we have RREF, reduced row echelon form. So let me show you uh, row echelon form first. We have that, then we can select our matrix. So we don't want, we want to do row echelon form on A, we're going to get this. Right, and that pretty much matches this guy. I'm not sure what the 1.7 negative 5 part's about, but it's essentially this. And then let's go, what we're actually going to use is we're gonna go back to our matrix, go to math, go to REF. I went up to go a little faster, then we go to our matrix, and we get our answer: seven, negative twenty-five, and fourteen. So that's the easiest way to solve a system of linear equations: is to use your calculator, make a big old augmented matrix out of it, solve it using reduced row echelon form. Now you know the secret.